Where's the sniper rifle? Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here with a pretty lengthy video. This video is going to go over all of the major tips and tricks that I consider the most useful for Halo 5's big team battle map, Guillotine. Now this is a remake from Halo 2 Classics Headlong, also remade in Halo Reach as Breakneck. And I'm going to be giving you the main tips and tricks, not only movement-wise, but spawning-wise and weapon-wise that I have on this map. This is a more lengthy video because it's very, very thorough. I want to essentially have anyone who watches this video be automatically better than anyone who has not watched this video. That's the ultimate goal. So if you really want to excel at this map, or if you're having trouble with this map, this video should arm you with an array of options as far as you know things you can pull out of your back pocket to use in a game that people just aren't expecting or um, things to practice on your own on this map. Now, I'd highly suggest that if you want this video to be most effective, that you download the map for yourself to follow along with it while you're watching this video. So the way you can do that is in the description below this video, I link the map on Halo Waypoint where you can then bookmark it. All of my personal bookmarks are just big team battle maps. So as far as I'm aware, this is the you know closest to the most updated version of Guillotine that appears in big team battle. So that's what we'll be using. Now, Another thing I wanted to note is that the game type Big Team Slayer is the only game mode that currently appears on Guillotine in Big Team Battle. So we're not going to be going over, you know, strongholds or anything like that because it's just not in the playlist as of right now. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So to start off, uh, most people know that this lift takes you to top robotics tower. This would be considered the hotel lift. So what I'm going to show you is how you can get from hotel using this lift to this tower. Now, I want to break a preconceived notion that a lot of people have, and that is they think for some reason that you need to be sprinting or sliding into this lift to extend the jump that this lift will give you. This is completely false. As you can see, there's no reason to sprint or do anything like that to get extra distance. In fact, it's very possible, even without auto-stabilizing, I might even not had, have had to clamber here. I could have just crouched onto this ledge. Now, was I aiming for this? No, you want to kind of be aiming for this corner in general. I'm going to go back to the lift now with a cut. So all I'm doing to make this jump, I'm not even running at the lift in a particular direction. It is easier if you're running in this direction at the lift because you can just continue pressing forward and the moment you thruster pack, or the moment you lift, should I say, you're gonna thruster pack towards this ledge, like so. And there you go. Now I'm gonna cut back to the lift again. So I'm also gonna show you this from a different perspective. I'm gonna enter it from uh, this angle, because this is probably where most people are gonna spawn and walk into the lift. And all I'm gonna do is I'm going to thruster pack in the direction over here. And boom, there I go, there I got it. I'm just thruster packing in this direction right after entering the lift. This takes practice. It's not something you're gonna be able to immediately pull off. So you just need to be aware um, of using this jump, particularly at the start of guillotine games because blue team spawns behind here. So if you want to get an edge over red team who spawns behind this tower over here, you can lift to the top yellow tower and get easy shots on them as they run along the bottom floor here pick up the shotgun which spawns right here and to the sniper. You can rain down fire from the top of this tower and the top of this tower while they're going for the sniper. It's very difficult on red team when you split up your uh, teammates like this. But anyway, um, moving on, we'll kind of go in a clockwise rotation around the map and I'll show you mainly the movement and slash weapon stuff first and then later I'll cut to an example where I'll show you in third person the spawning and how you can work the spawns in this map. So on this tower area over here, one of the main things that people don't seem to realize or know is that if you jump correctly and crouch at the top of your jump, you can easily just clamber onto this ledge. Do not waste movement by jumping up here and clambering or jumping here and clambering or jumping here and clambering. This is wasted movement. There's no need to do that and you will only 
extend the time that you are out in the open, allowing you to be shot more and alerting more enemies to your presence. If you're right here, most people on the map won't be able to see you. If you jump up here, you can quickly grab the storm rifle, grab the overshield, and people are not going to be able to kill you until you get out of cover and escape. It is crucial to know this jump and be able to execute it properly, so I'm going to go over it a little bit here. You must be crouching at the top of your jump to make this jump, or should I say, get the clamber. If you don't, and I'm going to fail purposefully several times because I'm not crouching. I'm jumping and I'm holding down my jump button to clamber, but I'm not crouching. And notice as soon as I crouch, boom, I make the jump. Now, this is a little bit difficult because you don't want to be right here and do it. I can still make the jump by doing this, okay? But a lot of people are going to find it easier if they're all the way against the wall and set up the jump so to speak. I'm using that term kind of loosely. Set yourself against the wall, set up the jump, and then press forward as fast as you can, and then jump, and then crouch at the top of your jump to give you that extra vertical clamber distance. Now, I'm going to walk over here to this ledge just to re-emphasize this. If you jump at this ledge right here that I'm jumping at right now, okay, you are not going to be able to clamber onto it. The same thing uh, applies to this ledge right here. Actually, there are many people under, again, a preconceived notion that this turret being here means that you can't clamber here and here. That is completely false. You can clamber there, but you must be crouching at the top of your jump like I did just now. It opens up so many different options that you have. Um, it just comes down to practice and kind of knowing the distance. On many of these jumps, it's going to feel like your Spartan is falling past the ledge and then suddenly they clamber onto it right as you crouch. It's a little hard to explain, but again, I'm just holding down crouch at the top of my jump. Not immediately after I'm jumping, but at, right as I'm about to reach the peak of my jump, I crouch and it gives me that extra vertical clamber distance. It is really important to not only know this for this map, but for any map that you're planning to learn jumps for. So. Uh, moving on away from this tower, that's the main tip or trick that I'd have for this tower. Um, this next tip is ridiculously useful, and I'm going to go over it uh, very carefully because of that. Um, this, I just simply don't see players doing this enough. I don't know why. It's so um, useful when you uh, grab the overshield and have a storm rifle, for example, and then you go over here. And the first thing you're going to want to do is execute this jump, okay? I actually kind of stumbled on that first jump there. Actually, that's not actually as smooth as I can make that jump. But let me walk it through you with you very carefully. Now, the first thing that's going to trip everyone up is this little thing that's going to, you know, hit your feet. If you jump right here, you're going to fly up in the air and you're never going to get close to this, okay? So what you want to let your feet hit this hit this right here, and then jump when you're over here. This is a very, very slight change. It, You will feel your Spartan's foot hit the ledge, and then literally like 0.3 seconds later, you will jump like so. Boom. And it's because your Spartan's foot contacts that right there, and then you jump. And that allows you, you'll never fail the jump if you do it that way, which is nice. And another thing that's kind of nice about this jump is you can set yourself up well by just clambering from this side if you really want to. Like, if this little uh, lip, sh should I say, trips you up, then you can just set yourself up nicely by just jumping at it and already be standing where you need to jump from and jump over here. Now, I'm crouching at the top of my jump even here. I'm crouching at the top of my jump during any jump I perform during this video, even if I don't have to. Now, this next part of it is a little bit tricky because I made it look very easy earlier, but it's not. So this little ledge right here and this, these two little pipes right here, all three of them will try to kick you off of this, which is why I'm not standing close to the wall. This is actually different from a lot of other jumps, like you saw me set up myself against the wall here. That is not what you're going to be doing here. You're going to be standing ever so slightly away from the wall. There's no you know, precise distance, but trust me, you will make it easier on yourself by doing this. I am not 
trying to clamber onto this next ledge. It is wasted movement if you do that, okay? I'm just simply trying to land somewhere on this. It doesn't matter where. And as soon as I feel myself land on it, I don't move at all. I immediately freeze my movement, okay? So again, notice how I'm just kind of freezing my movement. I let go of my movement stick. Then I turn around and I'm gonna jump up and clamber on this. Now you don't even have to clamber here. This is actually wasted movement. I've actually trained myself incorrectly to force myself to uh, clamber on this next ledge, but you don't have to. Notice there I just jumped and crouched and my feet curled up under my body enough that it, it let me over the ledge without having to clamber. Um, this not only uh, kind of reduces your uh, volume when you're making these jumps, your volume or as in the noise you're making to other players, but it allows you to j do the jump more quickly if you're a good player. So I just want to make sure that people know and are aware of this jump because I'm going to show it again later in the video in combination with a camo shoddy strategy that I really like to use. So practice this jump. It's extremely useful. All right. So moving on, you have two plasma that spawn over here. I'm not going to spend too much time on where weapons spawn and all that business. Now moving on, this is the only plasma pistol on the map. I'm specifically pointing that out more than probably most other weapons because it is ruthlessly important to know where this weapon spawns. If you pick it up and run away with it, it will never respawn until the plasma pistol that you have despawns off the map. So if you have it, know that it's never gonna respawn here, which is very important to know. Um, this jump that I'm about to show, I did this jump incorrectly for probably a year and a half before I realized that I was wasting my movement again. You do not need to clamber on the sledge. Simply set yourself up completely flush against the wall by placing your Spartan's body as close to the wall as you can. Jump and lightly feather your movement thumbstick to the left. Now you can see I'm standing on the ledge. Then jump towards the brown part of the ledge. This I'm probably not even brown. Don't roast me in the comment section because I don't know my colors. Uh, my Spartan's actually red right now. Just kidding. Um, this right here is a ledge that is not as easily clamberable. I don't particularly know why. I've tried to jump on this ledge a few times, then it just won't give me the clamber option. So just to be safe, jump for this, and it should give it to you every time. Now, rotating through back long haul here, um, this is what we call this area, or most people choose to call this area. Um, this is really where you don't want to be on the map. I'll be just very, very blunt. This is probably the worst spawn you can get on this map. So I'm going to show you a very, very useful and pretty advanced jump on how you can get out of this long haul without using this bridge and without using this little uh, corner cross right here where the plasma pistol spawns. You do have to be sprinting at relatively full speed, so it does require a little bit of setup as you sprint at full speed here. And I'll try to get it on my first try here. And there you go. So I'm going to walk you through this jump. You can also jump back to this window if you so desire. I'm gonna walk you through this jump slowly step by step. When everyone tries to first make this jump, what they are trying to do is combine all the movements fluidly at the same time in one go. You will very much frustrate yourself and not want to make the jump period by doing this. So let me make it easier on you. Just work with this instead. Try this. Just practice doing the jump in this hall. Don't worry about falling and getting back up the lift. Just practice doing the jump in the hall. All I'm doing is sprinting forward until I get those little crosshairs that mean that I can Spartan charge. See those little crosshairs on the left and right side of my reticle? When those appear, that means you can instantly Spartan charge. It's also loosely an indicator of when you're sprinting at full speed. So that's kind of what I shoot for. It's actually not quite an indicator of when you're sprinting at full speed. You actually reach full speed like 0.3 seconds earlier than those little bars pop up, but just as a good indicator to go by. So once I maintain full sprinting speed, I'm going to jump and thruster pack almost immediately. Now, this is the first mistake that people make. The first mistake that people make is they'll jump and thruster pack too late. What I just did was thruster packing way too late. I will literally fall past the ledge doing that very in a very obvious and dramatic fashion. So you really want to be thruster packing early like this. Almost immediately after jumping, you want to thruster pack forward while running at full speed. Then, right after I thruster pack, or 
should I say shortly after, as I reach the end of my jump and, and as I sense that I'm beginning to fall, I simply manually activate uh, auto stabilize and do that, okay? Now, I wanna point out something in my controller options that some people may be surprised by. I do not have auto stabilize on and I'm using bumper jumper, which means I have to manually enable it when I'm zooming. I have to manually enable auto stabilize by pressing A while I'm zooming. This is totally possible to do. I'm an example of a player who does this. Absolutely practice this in custom games. It's, it's a little rough at first, but I promise you, it's one of the most useful tips and tricks that you can pull off in a game. When you pull this off consistently, it really elevates your game above the average player. I can't tell you enough how much it does that. So um, not to beat that jump too much to death, we'll move on to this tower over here. Now, you should be aware first off that like I said earlier with that kind of uh, that jump back here, to make the jump from here to here, you need to be thruster packing as early as you can after you jump. So of course you're gonna be sprinting, but if you thruster pack late during any of this, you will not make this jump. That's just the way it works. So combining those, you know, being able to sprint and then thruster pack almost immediately. Also jump at the very edge of the ledge. I can't tell you the number of people I'll watch trying to do this. And they're, they're trying to jump from here. That doesn't give you the maximum distance. You need to jump when you're almost literally falling off the ledge, kind of like Mario style, so to speak. Just keep that in mind. I, I don't know why, you know, I don't know why people will have that mentality in Halo. I guess it's because the game is so graphically enhanced that it makes it look like you can, you know, you have to jump earlier because the ledge won't hold your weight or something. I don't really know, but you can, you know, the game, you can, your foot can be off of the ledge, okay? You can still jump. So I'm just, you know, trying to encourage players who may be more newer to, you know, more new to the game, should I say. Um, we're gonna drop to the bottom of this tower. This is a relatively common spawn, so I'm gonna show you how to get out of it pretty quickly. Uh, there aren't any useful weapons. The shoddy used to spawn in the bottom of this tower. It does not anymore. Shoddy spawns behind this pillar right here and also behind this pillar right here. Probably some of the most underused weapons on this map. And they really should be used more often. We'll get to that a little bit later in the video. So the fastest way to get to this tower is to do this. And there you go, we're at the top of the tower. Now there may be slightly faster routes, but that's how I like to do it. Notice how I'm trying to reduce my wasted movement. I'm dead serious when I say this. Do not ever use this, this part that I'm shooting at right now. There is no point. It is completely wasted movement when you can just clamber right here. It's, I'm just telling you, it's just way easier to do that. I guess if you were standing on this and then you wanted to thruster pack over, that would be slightly less wasted movement, but it ends up working out better if you just use this. Now, if you'll notice, I freeze and turn around and look at this ledge. Notice how I freeze. I don't try to walk forward, then turn around and make this jump. Why is that? Because this ledge gets in the way. And I'm aware that if I set myself up correctly in the center of this bridge, I'll have room to turn around and move them to make the jump without clambering. You don't wanna be clambering when you're doing this because it slows you down. So just practice this over and over in custom games and you'll quickly get good at it. One of the major pitfalls again are these ledges. They'll kick people off pretty easily. You wanna jump a little bit farther than you think. Um, the, about the center of this bridge is a good place to jump from. If you're crouching, again, bringing your legs up, it means you can go farther and you won't have to clamber as much, which is really, really important. Of course, uh, if you're fighting the wasp in this map, don't forget the kinetic AR that has bullets that do extra damage to vehicles. Very important to know. So another little thing that's pretty cool about this map is this little ledge that you can use. Now, be aware that most people think that you're actually clambering on this piece. It's actually slightly below it that you're clambering. I, it's hard to explain, but basically you wanna stand completely flush in this corner. Then you wanna jump up and slightly feather your movement stick forward as you're clambering. Okay, there you go, and then I have it. Now notice this second jump that I'm making to this ledge. I must be crouching while doing that. Otherwise, this little thing will kick me off. I'll show you it again and I'll purposely fail at this time. Notice how I don't make it up to this. Okay, notice how it kicks me off. Because your Spartan, 
Um, even though it looks like I'm standing up straight on this ledge, I'm actually not. My Spartan's head is like sticking through the roof a little bit. So this is really useful if you um, are getting pinned. Like for example, if there's someone over here who's shooting you and then you have someone like who's over here in this window shooting you, for example, you can walk into this ledge, clamber right here and jump up and start shooting this person. And that the person right here, I guarantee you is not gonna expect it. What they're gonna do is they're gonna like try to nade off of this pillar or something like that. Now the last tip and trick that I want to, or the last tip should I say, that I wanna show you for this center yellow tower is this little fall down point. There are a lot of people who don't know this and it's really useful if for example you walk across this bridge and someone pops out of this window with a saw, a cast, or a shotgun and just suddenly charges you and you're like holy crap I gotta get out of here. So what you do is you immediately just fall down here. Okay, now this does take you all the way to the bottom, which is pretty cool. But if you're an advanced user, and this is this is actually pretty nerdy, not the nerdiest thing I'm gonna show you during this video, this is pretty dirty when you pull this off. You can actually fall and turn around and walk off on this before you fall to the bottom and go over here. And if you go over here and do that just like I did, the person is gonna fall, if they chase you, they're gonna fall all the way to the bottom if they see where you went and they're never going to expect you being over here on this mid-level. It's really dirty when you pull it off in an effective way. Just be aware that that's always available to you. However, this little gap is not. For some reason, the game just kicks me. I'm not doing anything to do this. The map is purposely pushing me out of this uh, little slot here. So just be aware that that's an option for you if you wanted to fall down there and use that as an escape route. Another useful jump is to jump from this ledge right here to the top of the robotics tower right here. Now, just to harken back to earlier, this is the same jump you're making from this window to this window, just uh, duplicated in this space. So I'm gonna do run forward at full speed, jump thruster pack, and then auto stabilize. Now, a lot of people don't realize how forgiving this ledge is. You can essentially fall past this ledge, but still get the clamber option to get up onto this ledge. Realize that you, just like this other jump, you can be shot out of it when you're auto stabilizing and you will fall past the ledge. This is a pretty advanced jump. Again, practice on your own before attempting to perform it. And it is slightly longer of a jump than uh, this back hallway jump. I think the main thing that makes this back hallway jump more difficult is this little ledge that you have to jump over, whereas in this case there's no real ledge to jump over. You can also uh, jump from this side right over here, auto stabilize, and there you go. So just remember to keep that in your back pocket in games. So moving over here to this area, be aware that this entire ledge is clamberable, and no, you don't have to jump and thruster pack at it to get the clamber option. You can just simply do this. Um, if you wanted to get over there pretty quickly from over here, then sure, you could jump a duster pack if you really wanted to. This is mainly useful, again, if you think that someone right here has a caster. For example, let's let's uh, say that I'm an enemy player standing right here, and you are just walking across this bridge right here, and I suddenly pop into this window and start trying to kill you with this weapon. Well, I've done this to players several, several times where suddenly, boom, I'm gone. It confuses people to no end. It's actually pretty hilarious when you pull it off. So keep that uh, trick in the back in your back pocket. Just be aware of it. I'm gonna point out something here that I kind of like to use, not regularly, but it is something that's pretty dirty when you pull it off. If you fall right past this slot, you can thrust your pack back through this window without even clambering. Uh, many people will try to clamber here, but again, wasted movement, no point. One tip I'll need to you know, point out for less advanced users, this trick applies to this mini lift right here, and also this mini lift in this back hallway that takes you up here, okay? You need to be clambering every single time you go up this lift, okay? You do not need to have the wasted movement of floating in midair for you know the enemy players to easily shoot you and easily you know get a few shots on you because they know your trajectory they know where you're going to be movement wise you don't want your movements to be predictable so if you're a more advanced user you need to be clambering 
out of it every time. Now you'd be surprised how I'm not even pressing forward that much here, but during this jump, I'm pressing my movement stick towards this ledge. It's the same with the lift over here that lifts you up into this room. So just be aware of that. It just yet another small detail that separates uh, the average player from a good player. Now over here, of course, is where the wasp spawns. I wanna mention that the wasp respawns every two minutes on this map after it is fully destroyed. If you can get into the wasp, regardless of how much of it is on fire, the, the wasp is not destroyed. So in other words, the respawn timer of two minutes doesn't start until the wasp is destroyed or has despawned off the map. Very important to note that. I've seen this happen several times. The wasp will fall off the map over here, off the edge. It's not destroyed. It is laying on the floor of the map over there, and it has you have to wait 30 seconds for it to despawn. So just make sure you're aware of that when you're playing with your team. I've seen a lot of players mistime the wasp because of that. Uh, just, again, tips that separate an average player from a good player. So before we move away from this area, I wanted to show you a jump by the caster tower. Now it's actually outside the caster tower. You use this little ledge right here to jump on this uh, connection bridge between caster and top yellow. Just simply jump at the ledge, jump across, and then clamber. Now, this is a little deceiving. It looks uh, pretty easy. It's a little harder than you might think, mainly uh, because if you look closely, this little ledge will actually kick you off of this jump if you're not making it correctly. So make sure to jump late and you will get the jump almost every time. So moving on into the cargo area, this is where one of the two recon DMR spawns, uh, the second recon DMR spawns in this window. I didn't mention that other DMR because I don't think it's as useful. But right here, uh, one of the main positions that people uh, can use the DMR really effectively is this little place right here. You can see people crossing this bridge really easily, but the main thing is that you can see people who poke out right here. And this is a really good range for the DMR, but not as much for the BR. Right about here is the optimal range for the BR from this area over here. But if you're standing right here, it gives you a slight advantage on players. Also, you can laser people over here with your DMR who are on the sniper ledge. Just be aware of that. Also, right here, as long as you have a caster and you're watching for people to pop up right here, you can use the DMR and see people who are below the sniper bridge if they're dropping for it or if the weapon is coming up. I'm just mentioning that with the recon DMR because people underestimate the distance that the recon DMR can be used. Do not do that. Do not underestimate its di the distance it can be used. Now, moving into cargo here, I'm going to go ahead and show you the main way I like to use camo on this map. Now, this tip and trick I'm going to show you is probably top five for this video. I do not understand why people do not use the camo in this way. It's mind blowing to me. I've watched player after player pick up this camo and use it an infinite number of ways. Few, few players who play this map have I ever seen do this consistently. And it's mind blowing to me, so pay very close attention. I'm gonna do this all in one go and I'm gonna show you it very quickly because I want you to see how much camo I have left over when, once I'm done doing this. I drop down here, grab the shoddy behind this pillar, walking across the bottom center of the map where nobody looks, almost nobody ever looks down here, of course. I double stack the second shoddy on top of the shotgun I already have. I walk over here, I clamber on the first pillar, it doesn't matter if I clamber on the first or second, I jump up here, then I jump up here, then I clamber into the tower, okay? I have slightly more than half of my camo remaining with a shotgun that has 10 shotgun shells in it in a position where I can, I can drop down here, I can get a triple kill on three people from behind, come up here and shotgun two more people from behind for a killtacular. It's nasty when you pull this off. And I don't understand why people don't do it. I, I don't understand. People will just make the, you know, generic play and they'll, you know, run over to the tower for caster or they'll run over here for the saw. Do not do that double stack the shotties or at least grab one of the shotguns along the way to this tower. It is way more useful, especially when you master the jump I just performed over here. So I wanna mention something about the shotguns on this map that many people forget and I see not enough people fully understanding, okay? If I walk over here, you'll see that the shotgun has respawned, 
But if I walked back over to this pillar where the other shotgun was, the first one that I picked up, you would see that it's not there. Well, why is the shotgun over there not respawned? Well, that's because I'm currently holding that shotgun in my hand right now. So that means it's never going to respawn until I drop or despawn it, okay? Why is this shotgun then respawning? Because I picked up the ammo for it and put it into this shotgun. So it technically counts as me not actually pulling the weapon off the map. So I can stack the five shotgun shells that that's going to give me on top of the shotgun I already have. And in 10 seconds after stacking the ammunition, it will respawn back in the same location. Boom. So you can effectively double stack the shotgun like this and have infinite ammo. Boom. Okay. Please, please, please take note of this. Because once your camo runs out and you got that sweet kill tacular and no one knows where you are, you're going to drop down, you're going to stack the shotty, you're going to run back across the map along the floor, and you're going to use your radar to covertly get back into this area using your shotgun to clear you know, these corners up here. Make your way back across the cargo, and by that time the camo's going to have respawned again, and you're going to repeat the endless nightmare for the enemy team you're playing. It is a sick strategy to pull off. I just don't, the reason why I'm going over it so much is because people do not do this, and I don't know why. It's so, so important. So, um, moving on from that, just realize that every power up in Big Team Battle, every single one, camo and overshield, respawns exactly two minutes after you pick it up. Period. Okay? Just realize that, take note of it, um, and you should be fine. Now, the Brute Plasma Rifle spawns here, of course. Now, one thing I want to uh, kind of mention about this map that I have to show um, in this video, this is the only portion of the video that I'm going to uh, show one of the spawns before showing the spawns in a later section. I have to because it requires some actual gameplay. I'm going to move this box to block a spawn. Okay, there is a single spawn point in this entire area that I'm walking through. This cargo area, this entire area that I'm walking through right now, there is a single spawn point in this whole area and as well as this back stairway. This whole area, there is one spawn point that is here. It is right here where I'm about to shoot. Okay, right there. One spawn point. So it's really annoying because people will spawn behind you in the stairway even though you just spawned in this same spot and you came up here, you know, grabbed your brute rifle and are walking over here. Let's say you pause a few seconds to grab your DMR and someone spawns right behind you and is shooting you. That's really annoying. The spawn is overall really just annoying in general. So what I like to do is take this little box and I just, I'm going to show you the fastest way to move it over or fastest way for this video and I'm going to move it onto the spawn and I'm going to block it. Now you may be wondering, okay, well, Genesis, you're, you're doing this in a pretty slow manner. This is actually the fastest way to possibly do this. I encourage you, go into a custom game and try to do it with Spartan Charge. You will fail over and over again. Just to be very clear, I'm crouching and I'm hitting the top of the box to flip it, which is something most people don't realize how quickly it allows you to move the box. If you don't want to flip the box, just hit it in the bottom. Or you can hit it on the sides, like this, and kind of move it over like this, okay? So now I'm going to use my body to tap the box into place. There we go. This will permanently block the spawn for the rest of the game. And the best thing about this, the box does not respawn. So it doesn't, you know, despawn off the map and then reappear over here. It permanently stays in that location. This is by far the nerdiest thing, because if you pull it off with a team and you know what you're doing and you're controlling... If you're controlling the hotel area that I'm pointing out right now with my DMR, and you have your wasp behind the tower, and you have your sniper behind the tower, you can set up your team in this location, and it is a nightmare for the enemy team, especially if you're using the camo shoddy strategy that I showed earlier to infiltrate the tower. It is really devastating if you know how to set it up correctly. So moving on, this bridge where the saw spawns is just like the jumps I showed you more towards the beginning of this video, where you must be crouching at the top of your jump to make them. I consistently see players going all the way over here and then making the jump because they feel like this part portion is lower, which it is, so it's easier to make the jump. You can do that, but don't be that player that jumps on the box and then goes up here. There's no reason to do that. You can clamber at the highest point on the bridge, and I'm not even auto-stabilizing. I could auto-stabilize and get even more lengthy of a vertical clamber distance, but thankfully none of the jumps 
in this map really require it or none of the useful jumps that I think are useful really require it. So just be aware of that. Um, once we move into this area, I'm going to pick up a battle rifle again because I'm going to show you how to nade the sniper rifle uh, back to yourself um, over in hotel. But right before I show you how to do that, realize that you can clamber on top of this ledge, but realize that this corner right here, for some reason, does not give you the clamber option I'm going to show you right now. It just doesn't give you it. On the opposite side, this corner does. Do not ask me why. That's probably a forge glitch or something like that. I'll show you right now. Boom, I get the clamber option here. So with this side, you just move. You just want to be aiming for this instead, and you will get the clamber option. I'm crouching at the top of my jump, like always. I hate to beat that to death, but players just don't do it enough. Um, also, just be advised that if you're uh, doing the crouch at the top of your jump thing, do not... Uh, turn toggle crouch on make sure you have it off for some reason halo 5 i believe is default set it to on you do not want that you definitely want toggle crouch off because you need you want to be doing these crouch jumps just a tip for you know less advanced users who may not know that so moving over here i'm going to show you how to nade the sniper rifle over to yourself in hotel thankfully there are two plasma nades that already spawn here now I'm going to go over this uh, relatively quickly um, just because it's not that hard of a throw to set up at all. You just want to set yourself flush with the wall, okay? And all I'm doing is once I'm as close to the wall as I can, I'm going to peek out until these pipes are just visible. You see these two vertical pipes that are parallel to each other? Um, those are the same two pipes that can kick you off of that little ledge across the map that you jump onto. All I'm doing is once I'm close to the wall, peeking out so that the pipes are just visible. And this does not have to be exact. I could be a little closer if I wanted to, or I could be a little further away if I wanted to. That's okay. As long as I can just see them, just barely, okay? I'm gonna place the very, very right-hand side tick mark, or the eastern tick mark, on my battle rifle targeting reticle in the dead center of my screen. I'm gonna place it on the very, very edge of this little window piece, right, right here. I'm shooting where I'm going to place the edge little tick mark. Okay, so once I place my reticle edge or tick mark right here, I throw a plasma grenade and it is going to hit right here on the sniper rifle and is going to nade the sniper rifle all the way over here and I pick it up for the combat evolved metal. So be aware that because of the travel time of the plasma grenade, you're gonna wait, need to wait till it's about maybe four or five seconds before the sniper rifle comes up, before you toss a grenade at it. And my recommendation is that you toss both of your grenades, like so, at the sniper rifle, just to make sure. That way, if anyone is on it, um, they will explode or it might stick them. But right after you throw the grenade, right after the grenade leaves your hands, like so, I'm actually gonna back up because I gotta I remember, these just have to be visible, the pipes. As soon as you get the throw, run over here, okay? Sprint over here, slide thruster pack, and run over in this location. And then you can run around here, slide out behind the Prius, and grab the sniper rifle. Now, of course, it wasn't there, so it's not going to be over here. But that's how I'd recommend going for the sniper rifle once it is uh, launched over here. Instead of, you know, kind of blindly walking out in the open and just getting shot out, or shot to death, should I say. Just kind of go around the tower, just because that's a smarter play to make overall. Um, one small thing I wanna mention, um, this is getting a little bit iffy as far as my tips and tricks are concerned, I know, but I have used this before in games. If you thruster pack in this location and then ground pound against this wall, you can ground pound against any portion of this wall that I'm shooting right now. You will land automatically on this ledge without even doing anything. I'm not even, I'm not even uh, you know, trying to walk against the wall or anything like that. You just automatically land on this ledge. This is really useful if you know someone is just around the corner from you, like right over here near this Warthog, and you want to surprise them. It's also really, really useful if someone is chasing you. For example, let's say you're right here, and then suddenly someone hits you with a nade, but they're inside the tower and they're chasing you. You can use this to kind of auto-stabilize above them, the ground pound or something back down again if you really wanted to. Just keep those tips and tricks in mind in the ways you can divert the lift. If you're going for the overshield, thrust your pack at the overshield and then ground pound for it. There's no reason to do anything else because it makes you such a hard target to hit in midair when you're doing that. 
Also remember that when you're in this top tower, you can ground pound right here, okay? From this ledge, if you thruster pack out, you can ground pound right here. That is way better of an option as far as, you know, movement wise and not being shot than trying to clamber on this ledge and jump from the tower all the way out in the open over here. Don't do that. Go along the outer edges. It will work way better, I can promise you. Now, uh, as far as I'm aware, those are the main movement and or weapon tips and tricks that I have for this map. Again, it's not an exhaustive list. It is just simply the tips and tricks that I find most useful for myself personally. Also remember that down here by this rock where the shoddy spawns, you can simply clamber back up on this and clamber back up here. Some people will try to clamber this window ledge. Don't, okay? For some reason, it doesn't give you the clamber option. Even if you jump, crouch, and auto-stabilize, as you're seeing me doing here, I don't particularly know why. That's just the way the map is. Um, so always clamber right here. It's very, very useful. Um, now, the next thing I'm going to show you are a few brief tips and tricks with movement uh, via the wasp that many people just don't use enough. When you're over here with the wasp, you really want to be using these outer ledges so that you can fly below the map like so, and you can use your third person camera to see everything on the map, but people who are actually on the map can't see you in the wasp. You can also fly completely below this area right here, okay? Now, be aware that if I fly upwards here, my camera is going to get pulled into the wall right here. And you don't want that. So you want to float a little bit below it so that your camera doesn't, you know, fly into the wall. Be aware that if I go too low here, I will explode. But notice how, how low I'm going right now, and I'm still not exploding. So there's a lot of leeway you have here, a lot of leeway that players don't think. I can move along almost the entirety of the map over here without players seeing me. I can pop up and you know engage people who thought they were safe going for the sniper rifle. I can engage people who thought they were safe going for the OS and just easily shoot them off of it. I can go all the way behind this tower and see if anyone's behind here. It's ridiculously useful to know that how to do this. Another thing that's really useful to know how to do is if you're being shot by players and you need a small breather, maybe a two to three second breather to regenerate your wash shields, simply go up here, wait for a few seconds. You cannot go lower than this. You cannot go lower than this into this gap. There's an invisible wall that stops you. But you see how much leeway time I had to regain my shields while I'm up there. Another way to use that is that you can float above the tower, all the way above it, and you can then suddenly fall from the sky on players who are out on this ledge or out on this ledge. It's really a nice surprise tactic to pull off. Um, you don't want to go too much higher than this, okay? Once you're at this level, you don't want to go much higher than that or you will instantaneously explode, so just keep that in mind. Another uh, trick, um, we're nearing kind of the end of the video here, uh, is to uh, use this area back here, okay? Then you can go above this tower right here, and then you can go down here. It is one of the best ways to escape quickly and as long as you you know practice this in, in custom games practice all these tips and tricks consistently in custom games you will find that you are a much skilled more skilled and just more lethal player overall on this map so guys i hope these tips and tricks helped you understand how to play on the map guillotine uh, much better now i'm going to cut to a section um, in third person um, in forge mode where i'm going to show you some of the spawns on the map and i'm going to show you kind of how you can play around them and what to look for in your own gameplay when you're playing on this map all right so now that we're in forge mode i want to give you a disclaimer before we begin i'm not going to be going over every single spawn on guillotine that would be too much it would be ridiculous for the length of this video I'm mainly going to be going over areas of the map that you need to pay attention to and the main spawn points on the map that are important to know about and control. Let me give you an example of an extraneous spawn point that you're not going to need to know about. These three spawns down here you will not be seeing in Big Team Battle because they only relate to strongholds. Big Team Strongholds is currently not played on this map. So there's no sense in me going over these spawns, but you should just be aware that, you know, in Forge, not every single spawn point you see is used on the game types that are actually played on the map. It's very important. That's why I'm making this portion of the video in Forge, because a lot of people are going to get confused. 
Um, for example, these four spawns right here, very rarely used in Big Team Slayer on this map. Um, so this is where blue team spawns, obviously. But the main thing I want to just have you generally go over here are the areas of the map. So in the hotel, there's quite a few different spawns. This spawn right here, spawns over here, uh, spawn down here. And of course, every spawn that has a player icon on top of it, like this one, is a starting spawn. You'll never see this one pop up or used in big team battle because that's for free for all. Um, the only starting spawns used are the blue team eight ones right there and the red team ones um, way over here behind this tower right here behind this warthog so to start off hotel is a very important area to control because the instant you step outside of this building let's say onto this little balcony you're running around right here or you're running around over here i'll actually switch to my spartan mode um basically you open up the spawn points inside the building inside here so those spawn points i just showed you that are in the corner the ones were that were right here you open up the spawn points as soon as you break line of sight with them so if I stand right here, it is absolutely possible that someone will spawn right here on that spawn point that I just showed you, right here, okay? So one of the important things you need to be aware of is because there are so many spawn points in hotel, this hotel area, okay? You must actually be standing in, around, or near the building to block these spawns, and that's a very, very important thing to do. Now, if we move all the way down to the cargo area, you're going to be kind of startled, actually, to see that there aren't very many spawns, if at all, on the bottom of the map. There's almost no spawns down here. So if we move back here, you'll see one spawn point here. And just as I described previously in the video, there's no spawn points in this entire area. Look through this entire area right here. No spawn points, no spawn points, or should I say respawn points. There's none. Okay, again, like I pointed out previously in the video, if you move the box onto this spawn point right here in this little stairway, it blocks it, okay? Very, very useful thing to know. And this is a, actually a really common spawn if you're not standing around this location. For example, um, you can spawn here and then you can walk up the stairway to your right and someone will spawn right behind you. So you can just spawn right here walk all the way up here and someone will spawn behind you in the stairway it's really really annoying and it's something you have to keep track of otherwise you'll get spawned behind a lot on this map so moving through we do have some spawns in caster tower now this spawn as you can tell there's just one and it's not used very often this is a low frequency spawn um this is a spawn is mainly used when a lot of the other spawn points on the map are blocked i'd say the entire hotel area is a medium to high frequency spawn area in general okay now moving on to the tower okay there's not very many if at all you will almost never see player spawn below here any of this area that my cursor is moving over it's just not even important enough to go over really but there are spawn points throughout this tower you'll see spawn points here um, there's none down in this little hallway which is good you'll see spawn points these are relatively common these two right here and up here on the top of this tower, these are also relatively common, these two. So how does this, uh, you know, how does this apply to gameplay? Well, why does knowing these two spawn points right here, these two right here, why, why does that matter, okay? Because if you are standing over here, let's say I'm standing over here in this corner, right, where my cursor is, it is absolutely possible for enemy players to spawn right over here even though you're in this building, even though you're standing in this corner over there, they can still absolutely spawn here. It's slightly lower frequency or slightly lower likelihood that they'll spawn there, sure. But you need to understand that you're not safe unless you're actually controlling or in or around the spawn point. Once you break line of sight with a spawn, it is it becomes much more likely that people can spawn there, okay? Also, just due to the limited number of spawns in this map, there's a lot of janky or really weird spawns that will occur where you'll be spawn someone will spawn very, very close to you. Um, for example, if you have the sniper rifle and you come up all the way to this tower and are sniping from this balcony, I can guarantee you not only people will spawn behind you in this tower, but they'll also spawn below here. They'll run sprinting up the stairs and Spartan charge you in the back. I've seen it happen countless times. So how do you avoid this? Well, you need to keep track of where your teammates are on the map. If you're the only one in the tower, you are going to be compromised against, when you're playing a good team, you're gonna be compromised in seconds, 
if you are the only person in the tower. This is, of course, unless you have the shoddy or or camo or something of that nature. Another thing that you know, makes the tower a really risky play overall, unless your whole team or a lot of your team is here, is the long haul area. Now, this is also a very high frequency spawn. I'd say it's a medium to high frequency spawn because you can see these spawn points all right here and you can see these spawn points right here. I don't know why there's five total back here. They may not all be used, but this, I can tell you right now, this area is used quite a lot, okay, for spawning. And what will happen is players who spawn in this back hallway area will immediately transition through this plaza pistol elbow over to this area. And they will sprint up into the top of the tower and they'll melee you in the back and they'll spart and charge you. Again, in Halo 5, because you can move so quickly, you have to pay attention to spawns more often. And so my main, my main recommendation is that you are never in this long haul area. You, this is the place where you want the enemy team to spawn. Okay, the ideal setup I would say would be to hold the hotel, have your wasp behind the hotel, and have your sniper also behind the hotel while you're picking up the overshields using the lift to lift over, and you're picking up the, the shoddy, the saw, and the uh, camo while you're nading the sniper rifle over to yourself. That's kind of a general area you want to set up and hold, especially if you block the spawn in this little hallway, because you can control these whole spawns in here and you won't spawn across the map in this long haul area. It's just so devastating. I think the only thing you get that's really good on this side is uh, you're, you're spawning slightly closer to the sniper rifle and you have the plaza pistol, okay? But if, of course, if someone on your team has the plaza pistol and they're over here, it will never respawn. So you can kind of keep track of it that way. But the overall thing to learn here is that long haul is not the place you wanna be on this map. It is a very, very bad idea. If you push into this, trying to kill players out of long haul, you are more likely to force your team to spawn here. And moving on to the next spawn point, you're more likely to make your team spawn in this tower area. Now you see these two spawn points right here, and you see the two spawn points right here. They're not used that often. These three, or th this one right here, they're used a lot. And I'd say again, it's a medium to a high frequency spawn. This is by far one of the most annoying spawns you can get in big team battle because you spawn at the bottom of the tower. That's why earlier in the video, I spent such meticulous time telling you how to get to the top of the tower in a quick fashion to try to circumvent this really annoying thing that will occur where you spawn down here. So again, if you're physically pushing over here on the map and you're running up here, okay, you're not only forcing your team to more likely spawn in long haul with you, a terrible place to be, but you're also more likely forcing your team to spawn in the bottom of yellow tower or this center tower. And you really, really don't wanna do that. This is not the place you wanna be on the map. Again, these spawn points, these other spawn points, they're not as frequently used. These two also are not as frequently used. They're low to medium, if that. And there's no spawn points down here. Um, of course, this is where red team spawns, and occasionally you'll get spawns back here. But guys, believe it or not, those are the main spawn points on Guillotine, all the spawns that I just point out. So, for example, um, you, if you're on the outer side of the yellow balcony, this is a safer place to be in terms of not getting surprised as easily by spawning than the balcony of the robotics tower, okay? So in general, keep in mind that you don't wanna be in the long haul area. Because there are so many spawn points back, back here, the game will automatically shift the spawn so that your team is more likely to spawn back here in this bad positioning. You really want to spawn your teammates kind of over near hotel, or just if, if you're not sure where to spawn your teammates, try to spawn them where your teammates are as a whole so that you can group up and make a push together. As long as you're controlling guillotine areas on the map together as a team, again, I, I keep beating this to death, but it's only big team slayer that is played on this map. So your kills and deaths really matter, which means you need to push around the map as a team and control and push for what needs to be accessed next. For example, the sniper rifle's coming up. If the wasp is coming up, you need to shift your focus over to this side of the map. If the camo's coming up, just keep in mind um, that people will spawn behind you. Uh, like I said earlier, it, it doesn't matter. For example, this will happen all the time. It doesn't matter that you spawned right here, okay? And then you walked up here to this lift area. It doesn't matter that that happened five seconds ago. 
people will still spawn behind you in this hotel area, okay? Yes, if you're standing on this little balcony, the frequency is lowered for these spawns, but you just need to understand that that's the way the spawning system works. Unless you're in direct line of sight of the spawn, you can be either looking at it or you can just be standing near it, okay? If you're not in direct line of sight of the spawn, there is a small chance that people can spawn there. So just keep that in mind. Um, believe it or not, that those are the main spawns for guillotine. And that is actually all that I have for this video. So guys, thank you very much for watching. I know it was a rather long video, um, but you know, comment down below. Let me know what you liked about the video, what you didn't like, what you found the most helpful, um, maybe maps that you'd like me to do in another video. Um, and uh, thank you very much. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, or if you found it useful. Um, subscribe if you want to see more in-depth content like this. Recommend the video to someone else if you think that they would find it useful. And again, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next capture or whatever end of recording. Peace.